I'm of the opinion that the silver and gold prices are manipulated, have been manipulated lower for quite some time. And once this paper selling stops, once this system breaks, like we've seen in the late 1960s, when the London gold pool collapsed, there was, there was an effort by central bankers to keep the gold price fixed at $35 an ounce. You could say there's there's some uh, management now to keep silver locked at $20, $25. Once that system breaks and fails because the physical demand is, is too large, you'll see a big run towards $100. It can happen even in a few ones, months or in a few weeks. Willem Middlecoop, an expert associated with the Commodity Discovery Fund, has offered a compelling perspective on the current state of the commodities market. Middlecoop believes we stand on the cusp of one of his extensive career's most substantial commodities bull markets. His predictions are particularly striking for silver, suggesting that if price manipulation were to cease, the silver price could surge to an astonishing $100. Recent market developments have seen silver reach a fresh high for the week, approaching $22.14, spurred by the release of the U.S. Federal Reserve's latest meeting minutes. The market dynamics have positioned silver favorably, inching closer to the $22.25 mark, benefiting from continuous support indicated by the EMA50. Middlecoop draws attention to the silver market's unique vulnerability to influence due to its relatively smaller size than the gold market. Historical governmental intervention in precious metal prices, such as the fixed price of silver at $1.29 per ounce in the 1960s, underscores the malleability of silver's value. According to Middlecoop, silver and gold prices are artificially suppressed, and he anticipates that when this manipulation eventually ceases, a surge in demand for physical gold and silver will ensue. Additionally, the demand for silver from photovoltaic cells, integral components of solar panels, has increased significantly. This demand has tripled since 2014 and is projected to reach 161 million ounces in 2023, as reported by the Silver Institute. ANZ, a major financial institution, forecasts that the silver market is on the brink of a tight supply scenario unseen in decades, estimating demand from the solar industry to reach 225 million ounces by 2025. Middlecoop underscores the potential challenges that may arise in the years ahead, mainly as a substantial 60% of all silver is utilized in Asia for electronics and various other applications. Before diving into Willem Middlecoop's interview, subscribe to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up. That's why silver is so interesting. If you look at supply and demand fundamentals, actually since the 1970s, we have seen production deficits in the markets. And um, you had all these old silver coins from the 50s and 60s, and we used that to fill the gap. But I think um, shortages, physical shortage, shortages in silver could happen. Uh, in the next few years, um, especially because silver is used as a commodity for the industry. 60% of all silver is being used, especially in Asia, for electronics and everything. Um, there's quite some stress developing in silver markets. You see premiums in, for silver in Asia. Uh, and if you look at the supply and demand outlook for the next 10 to 20 years, there are hardly any new silver discoveries. Actually, there are hardly any real silver listed companies because even companies like Majestic Silver are half gold uh, exposed now instead to silver. So it's a very small market. And I'm of the opinion that the silver and gold prices are manipulated, have been manipulated lower for quite some time. And once this paper selling stops, once this system breaks, like we've seen in the late 1960s when the London gold pool collapsed. There was, there was an effort by central bankers to keep the gold price fixed at $35 an ounce. You could say there's, there's some uh, management now to keep silver locked at $20, $25. Once that system breaks and fails because the physical demand is, is too large, you'll see a big run towards $100. It can happen even in a few months or in a few weeks. I think we've got to be in this market to win this market. Um, but we play this with just 10, 15 percent of our fund. Global central banks injected confidence into commodities amid the COVID-19 crisis in April 2020. Still, the recent reversal in the grand commodity bull run, which began three years ago and sent prices soaring to multi-decade highs, has led to a 12% decline in the year-to-date performance of the Bloomberg Commodities Index. 
This index, a major benchmark for commodities, tracking 23 exchange-traded contracts on physical commodities and assets exceeding $100 billion, hit a nine-year peak in May 2022. However, it has since plunged by nearly 25%, signaling the emergence of a commodity bear market. Middlecoop suggests that we may be on the brink of significantly reevaluating commodity values, heralding a shift in how these assets are perceived and traded. One commodity that has demonstrated resilience during economic downturns is gold. Gold's demand remains consistent globally, making it less susceptible to the effects of regional recessions. As Middlecoop highlights, during the financial crisis in 2008 and the tumultuous year of 2020, gold initially experienced declines. Still, it ultimately gained significant value, reinforcing its status as a safe haven in economic uncertainty. Let's get back to the interview. The thing bubble, but the commodities were not in a bubble. You know, the commodities actually were trading at 100-year low valuations at the end of 2020, early to 21. Um, so what we see now is um, we have, of course, the um, end of the 40-year well period of declining interest rates, uh, every lower inflation. And now we just started a whole new era of higher interest rates, higher inflation. And I think that's when the commodities come into play. Uh, commodities tend to be counter cyclical compared to tech stocks. When tech, tech stocks do well, we saw that in the late 1990s, the valuation of commodities is very low. We saw the same in the last few years. I think we're about to see a very strong revaluation of commodities. Actually, we have a perfect storm building for commodities because we have shortages arriving in the markets, just supply and demand. Then we have the debasement of currencies, people looking for hedges. Commodities um, tend to be great hedges in periods of high inflation. Then you have the East-West tension, the BRICS against uh, the West, uh, China versus the US. There's some competitive tension on the critical metal sides which helps us. Yeah, when you mention gold stocks, people will think about the gold miners, but actually we're not investors in gold miners that much. That's a very small percentage of our portfolio. But we focused on the major, the most significant uh, undeveloped mining projects. So we are discovery investors. So we tend to follow the best 100 discoveries worldwide. And we like precious metals because they are a great hatch on uh, well, other parts of our portfolio. You know, as a, as, a, as, a, as a private, as a high net worth person, you, you always invested in real estate and you have all the other stuff. So then you need some um, precious metals related investments uh, as a hedge. That, that's our opinion. So about 50 percent of our investment is precious metals related. But we like silver more than gold. But there are very few good silver stories out there. There are very few silver discoveries out there. I think we're in for revaluation of the whole precious metal space. Uh, even central bankers are talking revaluation now because they need some support for their uh, balance sheets. Of course, most central banks have gold on their balance sheet. We see uh, central banks very active and accumulating physical gold for their balance sheets, and that's that's a sign. So we always tend to have 50% of our exposure to the precious metal space and. Uh, we do that through the best discoveries uh, worldwide. I'm, I'm not that afraid compared to, um, well, let's say 10, 15 years ago. But of course, when you have a real big crisis and every, everything comes stumbling down, uh, you will see the same uh, in, in many markets. But these markets will be the first to recover. And we've seen that in 2020. Uh, we've seen that even in 2008, gold went down first 30% and then it tripled. So, um, if if your investment portfolio is 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 wisely uh, well distributed uh, among the the better metals like we do, you always we we go down in downturns, but once the recovery is there, we're always up 70, 80, 90 percent within 12 months, and I expect that to happen again now. In light of these dynamics, how will the interplay of market forces and the unique attributes of silver and gold impact the future of commodities? And what does this mean for investors and the broader economic landscape? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being part of our community.